This is Niall Williams reading from Infield Tompa by Niall Williams and Christine Wood. It's an honor to be back in Kenny's, where Chris and I signed our first book 35 years ago. John Yoon. There is such hope in a day like this. The garden to be still wonderful, unimaginable even. If I stop and stand and look across at this January day, even though I have known it up close and personal for decades, even I cannot fully picture all that is to come. I might have a mind picture of it in May, say, when the poppies and lupins are in full display. But what is in bloom as they fade? The fact that it is constantly everyday changing defies pictures, defies framing, and it is best not to try. In our early days, when visitors came in wintertime and looked down over the blackish brownish beds, somewhat apologetically, I would try and talk the flowers into being. Over here in June, it is all, but the garden has taught me a broader appreciation of itself, not just the glamour of its young days, all of its time, which may be a natural function of age, I don't know. Enough to say, I love the place in January and leave it at that. In January, all gardeners have dream gardens in their heads and the chance to put right what went wrong last year, to move or divide what was discovered too big or in the wrong place last year. That this happens every year, that every year the dreamt garden will be better, can be improved just a bit, seems to me a good, small, hopeful thing to think of, these days especially. My mind being the way it is, it is only a short step for me to think the plants in first waking underground are thinking the same thing. This year the garden will be better. And while too taken by shape and colour, by the sheer vibrancy of the plants in spring and summer, my memory of exactly which got too big or were in the wrong place is poor, Chris remembers. With a forensic eye, she looks at a multi-prong of black stalks just inches above the ground and says, you got too big for here last year. Is it a sign of a pure gardener that she can throw no plant out? As a result, each decision is a double one. We can move this, yes, but where? And so it is we go through the January day and into the low light of the afternoon quietly. From bed to bed, cutting back, or moving aside wet, dead leaves and withered stalks, finding new spaces for divided plants. If none can be found, there is the blessed well up the road, or the ditch outside. A robin follows where we go. Despite all good counsels, we do too much. Driven by engines of hope and renewal, we exhaust ourselves. By four o'clock the light is gone and a blanket of cold lies along the back of my shoulders. Inside my Christmas gloves, my fingers are frozen. I think I'm done for today, I say. I'll just stay out a bit longer, Chris says. It's almost dark. We've done a lot. I know, she says. I'll be in soon. I go inside, come back out in the fallen dark an hour later to call her in.